Okay, so I laid everything out and I'm not loving it. <laughs> Just gotta do it, right? All right, y'all wanna see it? <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily Garvey and today I'm very excited because I have finally finished a project that has probably been in the works for like two months. And it is the gallery wall that is behind me. I have been thrifting items and just collecting things that I want to put up here. And I finally got around to putting it all up there. And I have some tips and tricks to share with you as I show you how I did it. So let's go ahead and get started. So of course we started by taking off this giant piece of art which we've had since college and my husband helped with that and we actually gifted this to a friend who's going to put it into her home and is super excited about it. I pulled down all of the things that I have been collecting from my thrifting trips and DIYs recently and also had some pictures printed and so I'm gonna take a look at those and see how those look next to this art. So something that I would definitely recommend doing for a gallery wall and really in all of your home is to define your style. It does not have to be one specific style like farmhouse or boho. It can be a combination of things. I feel like I'm kind of leaning toward is a grand millennial. If you're unfamiliar with that, I will insert some pictures of it here. And then also, I really love boho and vintage and cottage. So <laughs> I am kind of combining all of those things. I think it is great to have multiple different influences in your home. It makes it who you are. And it also will be more timeless. Styles go out of out of style. They go out of style. They're no expert on this, but that's just something that I have learned. Okay, so now that you've defined your style, I would recommend going back to Pinterest and making a gallery wall board and here pinning just any pictures of gallery walls that you like. Looking at these, decide which elements it is that you like. Do you like different shapes, all the same shapes? Do you like a variety of color or more of monochromatic look? What I'm going for is more of an eclectic look and so that's kind of what I was trying to thrift. Okay, so I laid everything out and I'm not loving it. <laughs> I'm not sure if I like the wood. I think that I need to choose like two colors. I'm thinking gold and black. So I'm gonna take out everything that's wood and just leave the stuff that's black or that I could paint black and then I'll see if I like it a little bit more. I wish I could tell you that there is an easy formula for creating the arrangement. However, really it just comes down to personal preference and it comes down to what items you have. I would recommend if you get stuck to take a picture of it. This helps you kind of zoom out and see things with fresh eyes and then also send a picture to a friend or your mom and see if they have any tips. So I just got off a FaceTime call with my mom and we played around with a bunch of different options here and I think this is what we're gonna go with. So the pictures we decided looked too harsh. So I am going to reprint these. I just ordered them and we'll pick them up in a little while. And then these black frames up here, we also thinking were just too harsh and we're standing out against all of the gold ones. So I'm gonna try a little DIY to fix that. I have this rub and buff in antique goals. I actually got this for an upcoming project, so I'm already busting it out and we'll see how it works. Um, did want to address, I did burn my arm a few days ago with cooking oil. So it was like a little reminder from God to slow down because sometimes I just try to do too much. I've talked about this before on here and just thankful it did not splatter on either of my children, but this will be my reminder for this month or however long this takes to heal that I just need to slow down a little bit. So let me see how this goes and hopefully this will make these frames match the rest of the others a little bit better. I definitely recommend wearing gloves for this and keeping a fan on because this stuff was stinky. It's also super liquidy. And it's just to show you the comparison, that's what it looked like before. And then the right side is what it looks like now with a little bit of gold accent to it. I think this is a great example of how you can make do with what you have and you don't have to buy the exact perfect thing for your space but can just make do with the things that you have and add a little bit of DIY to it. These frames were both older frames that I just had on hand. One of them was literally from the Dollar Tree back when everything was a dollar and I think this gold really made it look more polished and fit my aesthetic better. This one I'm working on here, I decided to clean up a little bit since I went a little crazy with the gold. This is where I have been kind of rubbing off the gold in this black area. And then this is where I have it. And I think it's looking pretty good. 
So you'll have to stay tuned to see how those turned out. And now I'm headed to Walgreens to pick up the prints that I ordered in the sepia instead of the black and white. And I love getting my prints just printed at Walgreens. You can always find really good coupons online. So these come out to about 20 cents a piece. I had one picture that was a little bit larger and I think that these colors are gonna match the colors in my gallery wall a little bit better. So here's the spread with the black and white. And then here it is with the sepia tone, and I think it looks so much better. They match really, really nicely. So now it's time to get these pictures into the frames, and a few of them I did have to cut down in order to fit into the frame. And you want to make sure that you really take your time kind of cropping it in these frames, and just take your time with this step so that you don't have to run back to the store. Another DIY that I wasn't expecting to do was that some of my older frames, like this one, didn't have the hook on the back to hang it on the wall. So I happened to have some of these in a little like hanging hook kit that I had. So I just used some E6000 to attach that to the back of it. I wasn't planning on creating the paper templates like I've seen many people do before, but I was home alone. And so I didn't have anyone to help me kind of figure out the arrangement on the wall. And I also had some holes on the wall that I wanted to make sure that I covered up strategically. So I did end up tracing all of my frames onto some paper that we had. And then I taped these onto the wall so that I can get the perfect arrangement to both cover those holes and know exactly how much I should space things out. So this is what we're working with. So there it is on the floor. And then up here on the wall, I think I like the arrangement. The only problem is there is a tiny little screw right in there that I don't want to take out of the wall. So I'll maybe shift it all a little bit to the right and then that frame will cover it. And then I won't have to try to fill that in. So something that I noticed in all of the gallery walls that I liked was a variety of shapes, not all just like the rectangles. And so I incorporated that oval shape there and then also the candlestick sconce. Here I am making sure my tall husband's head won't hit the bottom of this one. Okay, so I think this arrangement is what we're gonna go with. It's just scary putting the first nail in there, but you just gotta do it, right? You just gotta do it. See how it looks. If you don't like it, always change it. It is not the end of the world. So you do want to be really careful when you incorporate small frames into a gallery wall because it can start looking a little bit junky. I would say try to keep your groupings of the small frames to a maximum of two groupings. This will just keep it from looking too cluttered or too messy. All right, y'all want to see it? <laughs> I had to do a few off camera because my phone died, but this is where we are at. It's coming along pretty well. I think it looks pretty good. Looks like a museum in my house. <laughs> so that's fun. These I'm gonna have to wait on all these other ones until tomorrow because I want to make sure that the hooks are glued on solid. I will catch you all tomorrow and we will get this project finished. I've mentioned before that I do not enjoy measuring things. Yes, well, I figured out a way to hang these without having to measure, and that is just holding the nail back behind the frame where it will be hung, and then scraping that nail onto the paper. It should tear pretty easily, and then you'll just be able to hammer that nail directly through the paper and then take the paper off from around the nail. So to make the art not like stick out too much because of the little pin, all I do is just pinch this bottom part in a little bit to make it a little bit flatter. And then I also have been taking the wire that's in the back and I've been tightening that. You can actually just add like a little loop in it and that way there's not as much give and it doesn't tilt forward quite as much. So that's a little tip for you. So before I show you all the final product, I would love for y'all to hit that subscribe button as well as like this video. That just really encourages me a lot. And this is what we ended up with. I love it so much. And I think so many of these pieces are just so unique and they add a lot of character to our home. Check out my thrifting playlist linked at the end of today's video so that you can see how little I spent on this project. And I also want to point out 
out that this is the way that I did my gallery wall. Gallery walls can be done in so many different ways. And I am not saying that my way <laughs> is the right way at all. This is just one way that I did it and it worked. I like it. I hope other people like it, but at the end of the day, if I like it and you know my husband <laughs> likes it, then we're good. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye friends. <laughs>